My name is Amy Howard. Antique zinc is all over Pinterest and magazines. You'll see it used in so many ways on kitchen countertops, backsplashes, on top of your furniture. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to be able to recreate that same finish on simple sheet metal. I'll never forget the first time I saw real antique zinc was when I went to the Paris flea market. First thing I wanted to do was to be able to go home and recreate it myself. Antique Parisian zinc has so many great applications. It's great for kitchen countertops. It's great to be able to use on an existing piece that you want to make a tabletop, maybe for a family harvest table in your kitchen room. What you need to start with first is 22 gauge sheet metal. And you're thinking, where am I going to go get sheet metal? My suggestion would be to go to your local um, sheet metal shop and, and tell him what it is that you're wanting to be able to use it for. Let's say, for instance, we're rescuing a 42 inch square cocktail table. We're going to paint the base of it with our one step and on the top it's going to be about an inch and a half thick. So I'm going to tell him I want a 22 gauge sheet metal and I want a rolled edge on it because I'm going to use it as a cap. Much like you would your tooth, a cap goes over it and protects it. So I'm going to test it out. Here's a piece of 22 gauge sheet metal. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it you're going to notice that there's kind of a greasy residue to it. So I'm going to take my degreaser and I'm going to spray it on. And I'm going to take a lint-free rag. This is very important. And I'm just going with a little elbow grease. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting all of the grease off of it. Now I'm going to come back with just a little bit of tap water. I'm going to put it on top of it because I want to make sure that there's no surfactants or anything left over from my degreaser. So I'm going to tape my lint-free rag again and I'm just going to dry it off. Now I'm actually ready to put the zinc product on. I want to shake it up very well. I'm going to pour it into a styrofoam bowl, a Tupperware container, um, or even a glass bowl. So it's nice to be able to designate certain Tupperware containers, styrofoam bowls to be able to use for your different craft projects. So I'm going to take some surgical gloves just to be able to protect my hands. All right, then I'm going to dip my rag down into it and let it saturate it. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm modeling it. It's very important. You'll already see the oxidation process to start. You, you do wanna go off of it because I don't wanna create a band around it. So I wanna act like my surface area is just a little larger than it actually is. So I'm constantly moving around. I don't want to go in lines. I don't want to come around the edges and create a pattern. Consequently, that's why I'm moving. So I'm, my first pass with this, I'm going over the entire piece. Once I've got the entire surface covered, I'm going to come back and I'm going to use a little bit of pressure and I'm going to start going in circles because see how it started to reticulate. It's kind of like oil and water, and it's fighting. So we want to make sure that it all starts to go evenly. So see here how it's starting to say, OK. And I'm going to continue this process basically for 10 or 15 minutes, however long it's going to take this to actually all turn this dark color. You'll notice I am using a little bit of pressure because I want to make sure that all of that is going to be accepted. I don't want those little bright holidays of sheet metal showing through. I want it to look nice and old, like it's got a couple of hundred years of age on it. So now once I see that it's all been accepted and the surface area, I don't have bright areas, I'm going to come back with a rag and I'm going to just kind of blot it. Now I am noticing just a little areas here, see where this is quite a bit darker? I am going to come back with just a little bit additional application because I want those brighter areas to go a little darker. I don't have to come back over the areas that are already dark, I'm just going to add it. And you see how I'm still working in a modeling hit drag motion. 
Nice, now I'm starting to see it turn a little darker. That's perfect, that's what I was looking for. All right, now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna blot it again and I'm gonna wait for about 20 or 30 minutes to allow it to be able to air dry. All right, so you'll notice I've just taken a little bit of piece of cardboard. I could have a fan, but as it starts to dry, see how it's going to that beautiful, dead, chalky finish. I just love it. I love being able to use the zinc in combination with pieces that I do the one step paint on because it looks so incredibly authentic. Because it's an oxidation process, it's amazing. After it's dried about 30 minutes to an hour, it's ready for me to apply my wax. Now the great thing about it is, I can put the clear wax on top of my antique Parisian zinc finish, and as it dries, it's gonna go back to this beautiful, dead, chalky finish. I love that about it. But the longer you give it to dry, the better it's going to look after you've waxed it. I prefer having it to where it can dry at least an hour. If you need to be able to leave the project and come back to it tomorrow, that is absolutely all right. So I'm gonna take my clear wax, make sure it's a generous amount, and I can put it on in this direction or my hog hair brush. It needs to be clear wax because it allows the depth of the color to be able to show. Our beauty and our texture is already here in this zinc, so we're just wanting to protect it if we're gonna be using it on a countertop. And a lot of people will say, well, should I, um, can I put food directly on top of it? You wanna use a cutting board. You wanna be able to use some type of protection. Zinc will scratch, but to me, that just adds to the patina because they're so utilitarian, they just look better and better with age. So after I've allowed my wax to dry for about an hour, I've buffed it with my lint rag, and I see the beautiful patina to it. That it, I love the depth of just kind of that beautiful, chalky, dead finish with just a little bit of greening. Remember, no two of these will be alike. This is a process that's taking place as you're doing it. So enjoy the fact that it's a one of a kind. It's something that you've done and you can enjoy the bragging rights.